be dangerous in Iran because the people of Iran could start to believe that moderation is a possibility. By calling him a moderate, you have released a very, very powerful idea. Less powerful ideas have resulted in the overthrow of dictatorships like Iraq's. And the mullahs, are, if anything, understand their self-preservation. So they are exerting even more control. They are exhibiting even more violence. They are oppressing even more, as the UN report has pointed out, just as they allow this talk about moderation to try and seduce the United States and the West, because they understand that that seduction might start to work for their own people. That's why they're killing so much. And we are too foolish to understand it or accept it. And they're doing it for a second reason that I've pointed out before. I believe the aim of the Iranian regime is eventually to sign an agreement, an agreement that allows for the peaceful use of nuclear power, which they can then convert into any use of nuclear power they desire. They did this once before, a couple of years ago, under Rouhani, and their lies were discovered. Their enrichment was discovered on two occasions by members of the MEK. So now if you're entering into this pr program where you're going to allow inspections and you're going to cheat, you eliminate the people who can discover the cheating. You discourage them, you deter them, you frighten them. And I think many of these murders are taking place to eliminate members of the MEK and to eliminate others that would give us information about how Iran is cheating once Iran allows inspections. And we don't recognize that either. The inevitable conclusion of all of this is we have to have regime change. We had regime change in Egypt. We had regime change in Libya. We should have regime change in Syria. That might not happen. We supported all of that. And in those situations, we had a real dilemma. Would we go from bad to worse? In a few situations, we went from bad to worse. In this situation, we don't have that dilemma. Regime change in Iran is more necessary, more justified, more important than it was in Egypt, Libya, or Syria. But here we do not have a situation of worrying, are we going to go from bad to worse? Because we know we can go from bad to very good. This organization stands for all the principles that are necessary to create a responsible and decent Iran. They've proved that with the blood of 120,000 people. They've proved that with the blood of the martyrs at Ashraf and Liberty, because all of that has made them more intense and more dedicated to the principles of democracy, elections, rights for the opposition, religious freedom, rights for women. They're led by a woman, a great woman, They support a transparent Iran, an Iran that's open to inspection under honest principles, and most importantly, they support a non-nuclear Iran, truly non-nuclear Iran. So regime change ultimately is the only goal. To the people of Liberty and the people of Ashraf, who I always like to conclude speaking to because I know they get to hear this. Don't lose hope. I know there are days of great desperation, but the day of liberty for Iran is coming. I don't know the day, I don't know the hour, I don't know the year, but I know it's coming because it's in your heart. It's in your prayers. It's being made possible by the sacrifices that you are making. And it's being made possible by the dedication of all these people who support you, who believe in you, who love you. And when it happens, and it will happen, 
It'll happen because of the leadership of Madame Rajavi. All of you here, what you've done, and the new Iran, the new Iran will be built on the spirit of liberty, true liberty, the martyrs of liberty, because they will give Iran the impetus, the courage, the intensity, and the fortitude to fight off these murdering dictators and to give to the people of Iran the government they deserve. Thank you, and God bless you.